I, just to give you a very brief background, most many of you might know I am an OBGYN. Um, I graduated from Georgetown, practiced both in the United States and then practiced uh, abroad uh, under the Gates Foundation for many years from where my inclination to practice a different kind of medicine came and um, basically when the WHI study came out and the patients came in with Suzanne Summers' book, I had to learn different. So that was my sort of step into the journey of a, a new and different and very rewarding kind of medicine. What did I just do? Okay. Um, I do want to thank my staff. Some of them are here, but uh, Zena Andrews is the executive director, and Margaret, who's handing out those things, who's a member of the Mind Body Program, who actually runs it, and will be doing some exercises with you this afternoon. Uh, I have put my contact information in the beginning and the end so that you all have a phone number and an email that you can reach us at. And that, the cards are also in the back. So feel free after this workshop, if you have any problems or questions, to try to reach us. So I want to just show you briefly. This is something which I, I, I traveled to this part of the world in December, a sun temple made in 1200, 1219 AD, which basically symbolizes the chariot of life and how we celebrate it. So. They start off with animals as a foundation, and the chariots run, the eight wheels, uh, which are the chariot of life. Um, and they have spokes on this wheel, and each spoke is a stage of a woman's day. And if you look at it, the beginning spoke is her waking up in the morning and then eating and doing her hair and getting dressed and then making love to her husband. And this is all over the temple, basically these kind of depictions of uh, people dancing and celebrating life, uh, lots of statues of romance and reproduction, uh, things that I've never seen in stone before. And then on to the spiritual phase. Um, and we, you know, sort of transition through life to a phase where um, we have to decide how to optimize the quality of our life. And whether we look at how to stop the clock or kill inflammation, what is the science of staying young, it is a philosophy. When you have patients come in and say, well, how long am I going to be on hormones? Or how long am I going to have to do this? I always tell them that it's a philosophical answer. Nature didn't necessarily intend us to function optimally after the age of 40 to 50 somewhere, depending upon what our lifestyles have been. And we're living possibly to 100. So we've got about 50 years where we can choose to restore the balance and optimize or not. And when we look at the term anti-aging, and we use a number of different terms, we could say functional, regenerative. Um, I like to use the word restorative as it applies to every age range. We treat everything from infants all the way up to 100-year-olds. Everything from a patient who's just looking for wellness and anti-aging to the patient who's really sick. What you find when you start practicing this kind of medicine is as you get good at restoring balance, that balance doesn't just work for people who are looking for wellness. It works really well for people who are really sick too because it's all the same principles. Um, the data that I'm presenting you doesn't come from sources like this. This is a Native American Indian woman who I worked with in Brazil. Um, didn't learn any tricks I could bring home from her, but she fixed people. Uh, but we, it, it really is based in the general literature that we all have available to us. And I want to show you uh, a five-point model which came about slowly. Uh, as an OBGYN, it was very easy for me to fall into using hormones. Uh, of course, I was mostly using uh, conjugated equine estrogen and progestins, but as time went on and I started to learn about the bioidenticals, I thought, okay, well, I've got a new form of medicine. It works. It's great. 
But then I started hitting the walls because I didn't realize how many nutrients are specifically involved in activating each hormone. If you don't have iodine, nothing works. You don't have vitamin D, you can't carry T3 into the center nucleus of the cell. And in order for that to happen, D3 actually has to be above 70. You don't have a ferritin level above 90, you don't activate your thyroid either. So there's all kinds of little nutrient um, nutrient uh, pieces that are part of the picture, and that becomes important. So once I learned about that, I realized that if you're not absorbing the nutrients in the intestines, or you have toxicities that are blocking things up top, you have heavy metals or organochemicals uh, in the body, that becomes a block. So sometimes you can replace everything and still not have things working the way it needs to work. And if you don't correct the stresses in the mind and the stresses in the body, you don't have a complete picture. So basically, this five-point model is what I'm going to show you today. And we've used it in everything from a, a nine-year-old with, uh, with a psoriasis that hasn't been able to be cured for three years to uh, 60, 70 year old with fibromyalgia to just somebody looking for wellness. So it's basically a, a model. It's not rocket science. Most of us know that these are the basic components. It's a matter of putting it all together. So very briefly, why replace hormones? I'm guessing that most of you have seen this and know why you're interested in this topic. But with each passing year, the organs do produce less of all of the hormones as listed here. And we'll be going through all of them one by one. And progesterone really is the first to go, producing lighter sleep, anxiety, panic attacks. It is the number one reason for a Prozac prescription uh, in the United States in women. Breast cysts, ovarian cysts, fibroids, and heavier bleeding because progesterone is responsible for stopping the proliferation of cells. So if you're deficient, everything proliferates. It's the number one cause of a hysterectomy for a woman in the early 40s. Worse PMS, mid-abdominal weight gain, low sex drive, hot flashes, progesterone's a major osteoblastic activator, therefore it's the number one cause of bone loss. And obviously we know that women don't acquire Xanax and Prozac deficiencies when they reach age 38. It really is a progesterone deficiency. Our receptors for these hormones are on every organ of the body. Every organ of the body has an estrogen, a progesterone, a testosterone, a T3 receptor. It turns out that T4 receptors really haven't been detected on cells. So that's why we look at T3. Um, but that's why also not only do we get a myriad of symptoms, but we're going to find a myriad of diseases that follows those symptoms because as the hormone levels decline, come the degeneration of the heart, the bone, the brain, the hair, the skin, and when we're looking at people who come in and say, well, I had a DEXA scan, and the DEXA scan shows osteoporosis, what can I do for my bones? Well, the DEXA scan is representing what's going on in the rest of the body. If the bone is degenerating, what do you think is happening to the brain? What is happening to the heart and the vascular system and the vessels? So when we ask this question for any one organ, we are asking a very large question and we know that, for example, um, the same things that support the bone obviously support everything else. We don't, we don't really have a great way to measure whether the brain and the heart are doing what they need to do unless we do MRIs that are functional and 64 slice CT scans on everybody. But the two organs that we look at in our practice to gauge what's going on, one is bone and the other one is the skin. Whatever your skin is doing, you can guess the rest of the body's doing too. Um, obviously, uh, this applies to women and men, and I think women just complain louder, so they got heard first. Uh, but if you ask yourself and you're sitting here and you're not sure about this whole thing, if you really look at the medical standard, the medical standard is actually to restore every single deficiency with exactly what's missing. This is our medical standard for many of the deficiencies that we can identify.